Hello and welcome to Only Stupid Answers. My name is Sam Basher. And I'm DJ Wolder. Today we're talking about Watchmen episode 107. Wait, this is the home stretch. Only two yeah. episodes left. And uh, boy, howdy. A lot of stuff's answered, but we got a lot of questions, so we're going to dive mm-hmm. into it. This episode's titled An Almost Religious Awe. Under Lady True's care, Angela undergoes an unconventional treatment. Lori chases down a lead. The smartest man in the world delivers a stunning defense of his past actions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to try to go chronologically through this to answer our own questions. An almost and religious dive deep. Aww. 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 Yeah. Is that the name for the fart? Aww. It's the pigs. Aww. Aww. They are cute. Yeah. How do you learn to talk to them? Oh, it didn't matter if we talked to him. Yeah. Getting ahead of ourselves. So the episode kicks off with Would have been better if it was like a kangaroos. Like it's a kangaroo court. I mean, but he's not a... Uh, that could work. But also it's a... If you're peers. Think about the bits. But it's it's you're of general... It's a being... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of it by his peers. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, so it starts out... The episode begins with Angela as a child yes. uh, in Vietnam. And there's sad big documentaries coming out for the life of Dr. Uh, ten Manhattan. 10 hours. Yeah, yeah. 10 a, hours for the life of... Dr. Manhattan. I mean, it still kind of looks like uh, the the helper man that's yeah, yeah. on Ozzy Mandy's little moon. But we'll get back to that in a yeah. little bit. And, um, and it's on VVN Day. So we're assuming victory at Vietnam. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, in this reality, the because of Dr. Manhattan, which we see a little bit of him in classic Vietnam footage. Mm-hmm. Um, he, we Nipples the, down. Yeah, United States won, and now it's a state. As we've established earlier in the show, it is a state. Which... I would like to hear from the chat. This is a question I'll put out there, and you don't have to call me too many names while <laughs> I do this. Uh, my understanding of how states become states is that usually you have to do them in twos. That's why Alaska and Hawaii became states pretty close together. And the hist- before that, but when the mm-hmm. country was being started, that wasn't a rule, but then it became a rule once we started adding more and more yeah, states. Yeah. You got to uh, make sure the flag looks good. Uh, yeah, bas- mm-hmm. con- but also when it, there's like a symmetry when it comes to uh, power in Congress yeah. and states' rights and, and stuff like that. I, that's what I believe. It also doesn't matter because it, the flag actually looks pretty cool yeah, with yeah. a big circle. In the when they do two to be 52, tie back to DC Universe. See, yeah, they yeah. didn't want to do that just yet. Who are they? What's going to be the new one? Puerto Rico? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Not even in fictional world. Actually, you know what? Oh, what if there is a 50-second state in, in this universe, and we just don't talk? And maybe Puerto Rico is also a state, but, but we count they counted the star. I counted the stars. Oh. There's only 51. Yeah. Uh, anyways, and also, fun fact. Well, they bungled it. Let's just throw this whole show in the trash. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah nothing makes stuff. sense yeah. anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we see uh, the inspiration for Sister Nights by the only super person that she sees mm-hmm. uh, that looks like her yeah. in media and it's sister it's a night black exploitation film <laughs> a, a fictional as far as we know a fictional black exploitation film set within this universe mm-hmm. um and her parents won't let her watch it because it's too violent little do they know boy howdy is this little girl gonna get an education on violence <laughs> Real soon. Yeah, as soon as you see the guy with the scar on his face, it's like yeah, he looks like a Bond villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's about, which is like, is it bad that I think that? But mm-hmm. it's like, no, you did it. Yeah. <laughs> you you it, did it. You confirmed my bias. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we're both the bad guys. Yeah, um, yeah but he ends up uh, blowing his mom and daddy straight to smithereens. Yeah, because and he's... shout out to Darla from Shazam, the young. Yeah. Uh, uh, foster sister to billy plays young angela yeah and um when the uh vietnamese bomber he's he says death to the invaders um so people in vietnam are not necessarily stoked that the u.s is there uh some interesting this was one of the first things that really stuck out to me in the episode because they intercut um the vietnamese bomber with uh her her memories are still intermingling with will's memories which i thought was used incredibly effectively throughout this episode they intercut the Vietnamese bomber with one of uh, the Ku Klux Klan members that attacked Will's family um, in that the Tulsa massacre. Uh, and it's interesting imagery because it, on the one hand, the clear cut reading um, and probably what they were most directly going for is the idea that it, both are terrorists, which is true. Um, the more complicated one, though, is that the the Vietnamese person, his people were actually there. They, they were, he, they were there first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and not to justify anything he does, but, uh, um, it's just, it's just an interesting dichotomy. Um, and, and I do appreciate this show's willingness to, uh, uh, allow complex depictions and imagery in it's, it's telling, which is true to Watchmen. It's, it's going all the way back to the first episode. I think the first scene of the first episode with a black cop in a mask with a white guy being pulled over. And that whole exchange is very complicated, mm-hmm. especially if you look at the real world implications and you get some of that here as well. Yeah. And then we get into Lady True once again, explaining what the enormous tube is that's going inside mm-hmm. of Angela. Yeah. 
uh, of reveals of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yes. think for TV at least that yeah. is quite shocking when we learn what that all is. We have some. I have some theories. Yeah, that let's I not dive let's into. not dive into that just yet because before that we get the she's able to inject like uh, a tutorial yeah. on what's happening to her, which was hilarious. Yeah, they basically uh, memo dialy- dialysis, which yeah. is gobbledygook, but basically yeah. it's the the filtering out of bad memories, yeah. similar to what you do with your kidneys. Um, when you when they start to fail on you, so yeah, they. Uh, this gu- is a very funny episode. Yeah, thought, especially moments like that. That it, they, there yeah. was a little tongue in cheek and uh, very similar. There were similarities to like drug commercials in our world, and uh, apparently memories. If you ingest them too quick, tend to gum up the whole nervous system up there. So you got to get it. Yeah, get in there with a. What was it? They described it as a. May, uh, main host they gave it i apologize or, it's, or um, like yeah with the exact wording i don't remember but it was something like like a, a, a basically not like a pure host but something like the, it, the implication was the host of the original memories or or some sort of association with those memories mm-hmm. or i guess someone who could donate uh clear memories or they or was a receptacle for <laughs> memories Props to, um, according to IMDb, the creditor writers, of course, Damon Lundloff has written, co-written every episode this season. Um, but Stacey Ose Kafour, uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. She is also a credit writer on this episode. Oh, and, and she did an amazing yeah, job. Yeah, and this is uh, this is probably one of the funniest episodes of, of the show so far. Yeah. And I also appreciate that, that while the show is very reverent to Watchmen, it is willing to... Uh, be it's kind of its own thing and allow stuff like our, our favorite uh, silver, which is the greatest mystery we need to figure out is the silver runner. Yeah. Uh, the slippery. Uh, slippery boy. Slippery Steve. Uh, that's the, all, all I, that's the only mystery I need solved. It has to be show. Petey. It has, it has to, to be, be Petey. Petey, which we'll get to Petey in a second. He yeah. found a not so fun surprise. I kind of just in that looking glass wasn't there. So I was happy with that. Yeah, I was happy <laughs> with that too, but you could be wounded anyways. Yeah. Uh, we get back to Angela as we kind of end her first chapter, uh, going spiraling through her memories. But Jean Smart's, we find out that while Angela was under and going through this uh, magical mystery tour, yeah. more of a nightmare, mm-hmm. uh, she was spouting out all of her memories. Yeah. And Jean Smart, or sorry, I'm going to just name the actress. Yeah. Lori was smart enough to record everything that she was saying. And now, basically, a whole precinct knows that Hooded yeah. Justice was a black man. And yeah. They and inspired two generations, inspired herself to become a superhero, is the grandfather of this woman that she's detaining right now yeah. who's ODing. So maybe keep her alive to answer some questions. Also, she learns about Cyclops. She learns about what they were using and also that will 100% kill Judd yeah. through magic flashlight. Um, flashlight. And so she goes to confront, uh, or not confront, it's not meant to be a confront. No, she's meant to inform the wife of Judd. Um, uh, maybe appears, and try to get more info possibly from her. Early hint that maybe things aren't going to go the way we think is on her writing helmet appears to be a symbol uh, similar to the Cyclops mm. symbol. It might just be a, like a wink and a nod. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, it's interesting that a lot of the symbolism of the third eye the eye in the middle of the forehead because osmanius has his eye mm-hmm. dr manhattan has his atom symbol the cyclops eye uh a lot of uh, uh reusing of that symbolism which is interesting uh danny m by the way who watched with us live at patreon.com slash only stupid answers mm-hmm. sundays uh throughout that a little nugget and that was pretty cool uh also it might be interesting kind of similar to avatar the last Airbender, bender where the chakras are something important for unlocking the different bending yeah. there might be something to the where the placement is because his eyes on his belly yeah so maybe there might be something to kind of like dive into when it comes to that eye and like the there might be something more to that because this show yeah. has a lot of other layers to it. But yeah, seeing eye Manhattan's everywhere. I don't know. But uh, this leads to another one of uh, the funniest moments in this show this season, maybe the year, uh, <laughs> is when Judd's wife uh, launches her epic trap. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, garage door opener for a trap door. That yeah. is, that didn't work because yeah. of course you probably installed that. What let's ballpark 10 years ago at least and there's no reason for you to use that, it before in that house i was it seems like a family estate type of situation yeah. maybe there's someone you call to install that yeah but i like that because it's like when we watch bond movies and stuff like another bond reference because you got the villain with the scar you got the trap door it, when bond villains every time they hit the button the trap works perfectly or like when indiana jones is going through a temple like all the traps still work bullshit yeah like come on <laughs> like like I, I can barely get my garage door to work when i need it to you know what i mean the stupid uh thumbprint thing on my phone that works only only half the time you know yeah so i i that was the, the only thing that didn't track with that is Lori like still like not like tackling or something well, i would be confused too because like are you trying to like mind control me yeah, what are you trying to do and then happening? after it falls once yeah i don't know if i'd stand up quick enough to get away but it's really funny great reveal also great to see these two actresses kind of like 
try to outsass each other. Mm-hmm. It's, it and, was, and the reveal of her being like, she does sell that she doesn't know what she, that what Lori's talking yeah. about. Uh, and then she at a point, it, there's nothing else that she yeah. she can't fake it anymore because Lori clearly knows too much. To the to that point, it's worth diving into this. What she extrapolates from Will's memories mm-hmm. and what she knows so far, and also she kind of hates Keen, so mm-hmm. that's pretty clear, is that Keen and Judd had ties to the 7th Cavalry. At least Will believed that uh, Judd did enough to kill him, enough yeah. to kill him, and that there has to be something to Keen being a part of the 7th Cavalry, a yeah. group that wears masks, and also being uh, the like basically the spearhead for the Keen Act that made cops being able to wear masks and work without uh, disclosing their identities. So, like, there yeah. has to be something to it, which this episode doesn't dive into because then we get into James Bond. Yeah, four. yeah, I think, um, uh, I do hope they kind of maybe flesh out why masks would help Keen get elected because the implication is like, yeah, you got cops to wear a mask, which is going to help him be president. It's like, what, how? How does that, yeah. are superheroes like still really popular in the public consciousness so having kind of bringing them back in a way makes you look more appealing is it kind of because he's he's related his to the guy who did the keen act that got rid of superheroes so maybe he's trying to clean up his image because people still like you know what i mean like the how that train of logic works would be nice to know so here's just a theory i'll throw out there because and we'll just skip forward just a tiny bit to when keen and Lori are talking because yeah. some of the best acting of the episode from gene smart the amazing acting from everyone in this yes. show but just her exhaustion mm-hmm. and just like i i haven't had to do this like superhero bullshit <laughs> for like a couple decades now yeah. i'm really not up for doing it yeah, right yeah. now so and i like that keen is a genuine threat that they're mm-hmm. looking to make another dr manhattan and it is it roots in like we're not racist mm-hmm. we just want white people to have more power <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. than other races <laughs> <laughs> for no other reason it's that so hard to be a white man yeah right now. so why not be a blue one yeah. so I'd say that the analogy for Dr. Manhattan is the nuclear arsenal that the U.S. had in the escalating nuclear tension that we had from the 40s to the 80s, and Mm -hmm. let's pretend it ended there. Um, But more recently, since this show is supposed to be echoing our own timeline, in some senses, that Mm. we there's been a big push from people in our country to restart our nuclear arsenal Mm -hmm. and just keep making nuclear weapons to show that we have the power, that we are number one still. That's how we're going to show people that possibly that, and you can see that analogy if Keen wants to become a Dr. Manhattan and become not just president, but like the Mr. Dr. Manhattan president or whatever, that possibly returning to a form that feels comfortable for white America could also be something attached to the resurgence of costumed villains and heroes. Yeah, and it's been interesting too because that idea of that feeling like, well, people just don't think we're as strong as we were then. I mean, we need to remind people how great we are and how strong we are and all that stuff. And that that kind of like insecurity. Yeah, but like um, American Hero Story we're seeing is being celebrated as an amazing documentary. Like yeah. there is a love for, for that costume adventure of life. So yeah. possibly preying on those nostalgic views of the past. It's nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it could be his place setting to creating a country that's similar to the ultra right, we'll call it right wing because now it's left wing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the country is so he's like, we need to do some course correcting here. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that you know, could be. it's and I think it's weird, weird enough. This actually goes back to Alan Moore's uh, quote about superhero stuff being people un- unable to let go of their reassuring youth mm-hmm. because no matter where you are, your youth always seems really reassur- reassuring because it is in the past. It is static. You know what happened. You know what I mean? Whereas the future is always kind of scary because it is unsure. You know what I mean? Um, and the relatively reassuring 20th century, which which is, especially is, for white Americans, yeah, is his is was Alan Moore's wording, which at first might seem weird because two world wars happened in that. Um, there was a lot of upheaval. But again, it's the past. We won those wars. You know what I mean? There's this sense of like, oh, the good old, this imaginary good old days. And this imaginary going back to like, yeah, wasn't it great when we had a Dr. Manhattan? But we know from the people that dealt with that, no, it was not great. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dr. Manhattan one was just a pain in the ass on his own, just independently of all the questions he raised. Yeah, and also, but as an analogy, so does... So did every costume adventurer because it wasn't Dr. Manhattan who did the squid. It was them. They did that. They're responsible for that. And so like the good old days, if that analogy tracks, that bringing back a nuclear arsenal doesn't actually help anything because if you look at Chernobyl, if you look at what happened in Japan, like if you look at – or uh, was it Five Mile – Three Mile Island? Uh, There's a lot of examples of like doing that again is not a good thing. Yeah. 
what was that uh, bomb that like Russia almost set off that could have ignited the atmosphere? Like, yeah. no, this isn't good. It, this yeah. isn't good. None of it's Sar-bomb. good. Yeah. yeah, Jesus Christ. So uh, I, that's the analogy I'm getting, and I think there just needs to be a few more winks and nods and to kind of explain it. And also, uh, while watching this, since we're getting into the tail end of the show, similar to the Watchmen comic and Doomsday Clock, which is kind of like a mirror image mm-hmm. to it. The second to last issue is where you get all the answers, yeah. and then we get a conclusion to those answers. Yeah, I will say, and this dives more into the our kind of end game. I am a little bit concerned. I thought the first, what would have been the past two episodes? So this is seven. seven. This is seven. So the first five episodes are so confidently and deliberately paced, and the past two have been very heavy. And the implication is the next episode is also going to be very heavy in reveals. Mm-hmm. And I think it's slowing the momentum of the show, and it makes me slightly concerned for where the show is going, especially with how some of those reveals are playing out, specifically in this episode, which we'll get to in a minute. That said, uh, I have started listening to the podcast, which mm-hmm. we both recommend. Uh, Damon released, Lindelof and Craig Mazin. Yeah, and it's released every three episodes. And Damon Lindelof I've said he's like part of the appeal of Watchmen is that you were always kind of scared that it was going to jump the shark, mm-hmm. and it's like and that's we wanted to we wanted to have people have that feeling that it's not safe. And boy, how do you don't have to worry about that? You yeah. know what I mean? You're definitely going for that. Uh, definitely doesn't feel safe, which on that level, I appreciate. I Listening to that podcast, I really appreciate, however the show ends up, I appreciate the thought and the intent that went into it. Because you can see, like, from top to tail, you can see the level of creativity, but also dedication to the source material and yeah. adapting it to something modern day that that is pertinent and important um yeah. that being said it sounded like you didn't like the last episode not this episode oh, no no i do no, yeah. no 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 i did I, I really did like that episode it's just i'm worried that because we've set up so many mysteries mm-hmm. that the the for me reveals in and of themselves are not terribly exciting and so the fact that it's like reveal on top of reveal on top of reveal is not necessarily my my favorite narrative mechanic mm-hmm. uh and it feels like we're kind of getting lost in the weeds on that maybe Maybe. It depends on... It, it is kind of, answering questions, but it also is raising huge ones as it goes along. So uh, when it comes to... And speaking of like things piling up, although I, I do think maybe there's a reveal here that will be interesting. Uh, going back to Angela, we go back to her memories, and she's... First off, the um, Vietnamese cops find the person responsible for the bomb, the one that did not blow up. Yeah. Um, uh, he was taken care of. Um, Jesus. And, and she wanted to listen. Yeah. and Well, yeah. So the guy that didn't blow up, uh, they basically like, is this guy? And she's like, very distinctive scar. Yeah, that's the dude. And yeah, like you said, she wanted to listen. And this is the moment she decided she wanted to be a cop. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> complicated, to say the least, complicated yeah. feelings during yeah. that. But, and, and to kind of cap off her her trip down memory lane, she meets her grandmother, which yeah. was teased in the last trailer, yes. which I totally blew out of my brain that and they had casted that, that props woman. Props to the casting department that, that the actress that plays the young version of the grandma and then the grandma version of the grandma are very, like, you, you, there's a continuity there that mm-hmm. I think is very, very cool. And I... It, they, they felt like the same person. And it, it, they kind of hammer home that like, oh, the trauma that she went through too basically didn't make her the best mom either. Yeah. Or, or something else happened with the yeah, son. She, yeah, because the, the way she tells the story is that basically her son wanted to go off and join the military, specifically to fight in Vietnam, and she said if he did that she would never talk to him again um and she even says like he's stubborn but he doesn't know where he got his stubborn from Mm. so his whole his whole lineage is a very stubborn group of people um and yeah so there's some complications there and she uh lightly brushes off the fact that she had a small heart attack uh and she's open to having her daughter watch sister night and i just at this point i just i hope angela watched that movie i'm guessing she must have (laughs) or she's just like never watched it but she looks really cool i just can't find a vcr and and there's also a a, a lovely moment where she talks about she wanted to see that movie because it's somebody that looked like her which talks it directly speaks to representation in specifically superhero media but all genre media Mm -hmm. um which is it, it was part of the main appeal of black exploitation too, because that was the you know with Chaff and Dolomite and stuff like that. It was an opportunity to see you be the hero and not be like that dollar bill poster. You're the guy getting punched. You know. Uh, by the way, since a lot more people are watching these reviews, just here's a little uh, PSA: go watch Dolomite is my name on Netflix. Yeah, it's yeah. a wonderful movie, one of the best also, movies of the year. You can look, go see our review of it. Yeah, go watch that our review. Be, that would that be, would be helpful too. Yeah. So anyway, she um, uh, and as they're leaving in what is almost like a comical like if it weren't so sad it'd be yeah. almost funny like that all these awful things happen to angela grandma has another heart attack and dies on the way to the airport and the imagery behind 
uh, Angela can't be accidental, that you're yeah. seeing a portrait, uh, a mural of Dr. Manhattan with devil horns now, and it says murderer. There's graffiti over it that yeah. says murderer. And I'm kind of, because we had the question as it was happening, it's like, wait, we know she meets Cal in um, Saigon. So how did she go to Tulsa and then come back? And, and I think is. I think maybe because of how Dr. Manhattan perceives time, as it's described in the comic, um, that he she needed to stay in in Saigon and so he made sure she did stay in Saigon. Interesting. Which again how how responsible is is he for that because as he points out in the comic it's like he's kind of a slave of time. He just sees the strings, yeah. which we get a cool image of when with the puppet of Dr. Manhattan, which is another great little easter egg within the show. So it's like, what well, did he murder her? Or did he, he just knew he did kill her, so he killed uh, her. So I I will say Entitled to that theory, yeah. I don't think he did that because I, it's hard to imagine him like in on a rooftop and being like, and poof, heart attack. But he wouldn't have he wouldn't have to because he could just make it happen. Uh, but either way, I don't yeah. I don't think he is directly responsible for that specifically. Mm. I think the way he kind of has those emo- where he pretends not to have emotions, yeah. but he still does. That's why he gets with Lori. Like yeah. that's why he d- he does make decisions. Yeah, but he feels like he can't really do that. Yeah. Anyways, I think that. Him getting with Angela, we're getting ahead of ourselves yeah, here, yeah. Uh, is as hap- is but by as the way, spoiler coincidental warning. as... You should have known, but spoiler yeah. warning. I know. I don't know why I feel like I'm <laughs> yeah. cagey. I'm like, I'm, tell- I'm I really telling... I feel the same way. I feel the same way. But just in case you're like, oh, watch these reviews, but not watch the show. Dumb. Watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's more coincidental because I want to get to that theory about yeah. Dr. Manhattan. Anyways, th- that flashback with grandma mm-hmm. is tied to the fact that she just ripped out her tube because she's my favorite reveal in the whole episode uh she found out that the natural host thank you danny m in the chat yeah. uh is is yeah an elephant i love it because we so we watched like sam said at patreon.com slash only stupid answers we watched these live you see our live reactions and we were sitting there like okay it's got to either be will my big one was since we finally seen Young Will in the flashback. Yeah. I was thinking it's it's going to be a clone of Will because we've established cloning or a clone of Angela. Yeah. And then they open it and it's like, it's not any, there's literally zero way anybody could have guessed what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. I hope there's not an explanation. I yeah. hope it's just like, that's just, we were just supposed to imply that that was the best option. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we got. Okay. And the end. Can I, can I throw out my theory? Yes. So, Occ- or maybe in the Pedipedia, we'll explain uh, why. Uh, occasionally, that's probably true. Yeah. So occasionally in surgeries when you need to do like a blood transfusion, yeah. whew, I'm going to need you to talk about something else while I figure yeah, this yeah, out. Yeah. There are times where you would bring in an animal to help you process blood okay. uh, through a person. You'd go through a person, go through a machine, go through an animal, and back around, and cool. just go through. Yeah. So possibly... And that's how you get werewolves. Yeah, the analogy yeah, yeah. is that while those animals... Uh, in my head, I'm going to look this up and confirm, it has to do with the liver or has to do with the heart. Yeah. So when it comes to processing blood and yeah. uh, and toxins within it. Possibly they're using the old adage that, oh yeah, it was the score bunny. I got to do Pokemon game. But possibly the ana- the old adage of the elephants never forget that yeah. their brains are so big and good. It's yeah. like, they're clear, they're crystal clear. Uh, you yeah, can yeah, run yeah, it through yeah. that like a tap and it just go ahead and clear. It's like cheesecloth. It just goes ahead and purifies and it. And even if that's not the case, the idea, because we have that adage, ele- elephants never forget. It's a good, it's so funny. I, I love, I love that reveal so much. I might, I might have mixed feelings on this episode specifically where it might go. That reveal in and of itself is one of my favorite things ever. Uh-huh. Cause it just, that's why Blew the tube's so big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I don't know about you. I don't. I don't like. You know, one hundred percent give blood, but it mm-hmm. is. It's. It's a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, if you don't like needles or tubes, it's a lot. And then hers is like insane. You know, no, cozy. Just because that's got fin an elephant. <laughs> yeah. So she sees the elephant. She pulls the tube. She has that last memory. She goes to um, True's um, little, basement. Basically. Well, basically, her cerebro essentially mm-hmm. is what it kind of looks like. Um, and earlier in a conversation with True, True pointed out that we our first little hint of what's going on with Cal. There was an accident with amnesia. Amnesia is crazy rare, which of course it would be. Like, mm-hmm. Not a lot of people running around with full amnesia. And we find out when Angela's at the Globe where all those Dr. Manhattan calls are going. Nowhere. Nowhere. But they're being recorded. Yes. Oh, and I mean, yeah, not to Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, not to Dr. And Manhattan. Not to Mars. And he's not on Mars, which I like that it's... He's not there. Yeah. Oh, and also, I, I, uh, we'll get into the reveal, but also it's like, yeah, we don't know where he is. Yeah. There's no way to track. He left. Yeah. Left, left. Like, mm-hmm. but we'll get into that. You mentioned that there was a conversation before. I just want to finish clearing all of the other storylines till we get to the end. Yeah. You, in that conversation, it's actually between memories between True and Angela. And yeah. she mentions oh, right. that uh, after hearing uh, Bien 
uh, talk about a memory that she has, yes. uh, a nightmare. She Angela. does this whole like compare pictures thing. I, by the way, the actress that plays the the young girl mm. is so great at being like adorable, but like vaguely menacing and yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then you kind of like hate her a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you also realize, oh, something's going on with mm-hmm. her that she experienced. She's experiencing pain and nightmares yeah. from something else. And we find out that your theory, you threw this out there yes. uh, initially. So DJ talks trash. You can go ahead and claim it. He's getting put I got the one. Line. Didn't get the elephant, but him, I got this one. Give him the writing credit. Yeah. Um, you should. Yeah. If, we're, if, any, if we're ever right, yeah. hey, come on, give us an attaboy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, that BM is, uh, is the is the clone of the mother of True. Yes. Lady True. And she's giving um, her her memories, which is how... Because she rightly points out, and I'm glad that this show acknowledges it, because a lot of shows are like, they made a clone of the person, and he's just like him. It's like, well, that's not, that's doesn't not make works. any sense. You, they have to have the memories to be that person. And Angela's like, well, why? why? And she's like, well, wouldn't you, they're literally hours away from starting the Millennium Clock. It's like, wouldn't you want your parents at your greatest achievement? It's like, you psych, and Angela correctly is like, you were insane, you were a crazy person. But also, what about your dad? Yes. And this isn't how the transition works as far as I remember, but we do go we do go to Ozymandias mm-hmm. and we find out it's been it has been one year yeah. of a year long trial mm-hmm. with the game warden yes. and multiple clones that have basically become sentient individual beings but also are tied to this weird uh, the the hierarchy of how this world works. Yeah. Which, by the way, I don't know if we mentioned the last one because he didn't show up, but it has been a year each time we've checked in with Ozymandias. And I think you and I had some confusion because there's a cake with candles. Yeah. But you, which marks his anniversary. We of just being, thought they were dumb clones. Yeah, robots. because they tried to hand him the horseshoe. So I assumed it was like a bug in the matrix. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But no, it's been a year each time. So now this trial has been going on a year. And there are some questions about like, how did these people learn how court systems work and all this stuff? They and, know how to talk, speak and, English, though. And how did they do 365 days of this if he never did, spoken in his defense? Uh, they just kept building a case. Yeah. And after all the evidence they talk about, it yeah. just kind of makes sense by how much they they are aware of. Yeah. How are they aware? So he must have just been gabbing yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit. He's Why would they know? Him up the Unless time. they just become smarter and smarter the longer that they're alive and they just Maybe learn Maybe they're like Janets. Each time you reset them, they're a little bit smarter. <laughs> Please watch The Good Place. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the best shows on television. It's a, it's a lot more lighthearted than this show, that's yeah, for sure. it does deal with heavy shit though, yeah. to be honest. Um, and yeah, and so they ask him what his defense is and it is a juicy fart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I was like... Mm-hmm. But also when... Especially because it sounds super fake. Yeah, but also I like the game Warren's response. And also just if you can see it on his face that it's like, yeah, this it's none of this is real. Yeah. None of it's real to him. Yeah. This doesn't matter. Also, the... the the fe- the no the prosecutor like gives him a wink like uh-huh. he's definitely banging these clones by the way and I don't feel good about it he is because we don't know where their uh, sense of self begins and ends like their, con- their ability to consent and he's, shockingly it just makes him a worse person yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, the game warden says like oh because you these aren't your peers they yeah. even know that they're less than yeah. Ozymandias yeah. and are aware that he killed th- three million people yeah. And other costume adventurers. Yeah. They, uh, he brings in a bunch of pigs, which don't know where they came from. Did you think it was going to be like uh, clones of the original, like Minutemen or something? Like some, somebody like. I thought, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, or like the baby watchman from the Simpsons bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. V for vacation. (laughs) Such a good, such a good in joke for the Simpsons to do. Uh, That's what happens when you're on for over 30 years. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. You get a couple winners. You get the pig to call the verdict and it doesn't matter because he's guilty. And I don't know what that means because Mm -hmm. the game warden can hurt him. Yeah. That stabbed, almost stabbed him, punched him in the face at the yeah. very least, and uh, has has shot at him. Yeah. I, um, yeah. The uh, end, though, is him kind of looking up and being, uh, he's frowning and he's not feeling too good, and it cuts to oh, the... Oh, and actually has a tear in his eye, yeah. which I think maybe implies some... No matter how big your ego is, you, I have to imagine you have to feel some guilt for three... Oh, you think it's guilt? Or something, man. I thought it was just... That he, it's the, I mean, he knew he was in hell, yeah. but this is the confirmation. Oh yeah, because they're all hell. around him like, you're guilty, guilty. Guilty, yeah. I would be, yeah. I mean, that's what I took it as, but mm-hmm. you're not wrong. He yeah. could finally feel guilt for what he's, what yeah. he's done. Uh, maybe Keen put him there. Maybe Lady True put him there to make him feel this. But we yeah. do get the statue of that face mm-hmm. that he's making. He's like, why? And we that question came up earlier. Why is he old? Mm-hmm. Maybe he's like, it's like a Han Solo thing. Yeah, he's just in carbonite. Yeah. Or that's just like his skeleton in there. Maybe they, that's how they punish him is by burning or yeah. melting 
gold all over his body. It'd be interesting if he he's been dead this whole prior to the show starting or whatever. Well, I want my dad to be here. That's got it, oh, well. Okay, we I think we should save all our theories for the end. But Danny M in the chat says is Lady True's dead, Ozymandias, or maybe the comedian because she's from Vietnam, and mm-hmm. we did see that the comedian did get around in Vietnam. Yeah, what a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. they're all kind of not great. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but at, at the reveal with Lady True is that. Dr. Manhattan is not on Mars. He's yes. nowhere else. He's in Tulsa. Uh, yeah, and, hiding know, as a human. Hiding as a human. And she keeps trying to tell Angela who it is yeah. because she knows. And uh, Angela doesn't bother to ask because it turns out Angela also knows. Yes. Yeah. And the reveal is, is that Cal, mm-hmm. we, we, and also we learned in this episode that there is a chunk of his memory that he just lost. And yeah. that's, there's a line from Lady True. It's like, that's not how. Yeah, uh, right even yeah. amnesia, except for in soap operas where yeah. you, lose, you lose your memory. Uh, by the way, reading true stories about amnesia is always super interesting. There's mm-hmm. a Nicholas Sparks book about it that is based on a true story. Anyways, yeah. super interesting. Um, they fall in love all over again. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we find that Cal lost literally all of his noodle yeah. and uh angela and him are together now and and it turns out there's a reason he's uh, maybe a little bit robotic and like not not big on keeping secrets and also not big on entertaining any idea of like an afterlife or anything beyond that that's a great point yeah yeah he's um, a little bit yeah you guys are being like there's no way there's clones on this everything's a robot it's like what well, he's kind of a robot yeah, uh, uh, by the way we know that uh the seventh cavalry are going after dr Manhattan. yes um, and there, when Angela goes home, they're outside her house. Um, and she explains that he, she needs to get his memories out and that she has a hammer. And I like that even though at this point we'd already kind of figured out what was happening, there isn't, when he's like, Hey, your brain's not been great the past couple of days. It's like, oh, shit, man, it's, he's right. This, this might yeah. not be a good thing. You might be mixing up Cal and yeah. like when Will met Dr. Manhattan or yeah, something, yeah. but they pull out what looks like a magnetic ring with a with a hydrogen atom in it. Yeah. Which, by the way, was what was painted around the Cyclops' eye yeah. in, the, in the Seventh Cavalry headquarters. When, when uh, Laurie was down there yeah. and Keen was given his whole spiel. Yeah, and then you see him light blue again, and it's like, hi, honey, we'd, we're fucked or whatever. Yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. And it's, uh, we'll get into like the trailer we got for next week in a second, but yeah. the reveal is that Cal has been Dr. Manhattan this entire time. Yes. And I, I, as we were watching it, we, you mentioned at the end of our stream that that wasn't quite sitting well with you. The um, reveal. Yeah, because it doesn't it track with anything we know about Dr. Manhattan, really, that he would choose to do that. The next episode is, seems to fill in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, and it goes back to that, like, being audacious and maybe being, being risky. And, and it just seems like, it, two things. One, can you make that square with what we know about Dr. Manhattan Two, third episode in a row that's just revealing things like that's, that's a lot. Cause when you boil down Watchmen, it's all, it all ties back to essentially why did the comedian get killed, which loops into Ozymandias' greater plan. And there's stuff revealed about characters, you know, their backstories and stuff like we got with looking glass and kind of like we got with Will. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, Plans within plans within schemes with other scheming parties. It's like it. It's basically one scheme, and it, this might also end up being essentially one one scheme. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just at this moment a little bit concerned that it's like maybe we're getting to lost territory where it's like twists on top of twists, reveals on top of reveals, Psh, you and talk like about lost. You didn't ever. You, you only watched the finale. Yeah, you, got, yeah, yeah. you didn't invest all the years and tears into that, that that's show. It. But that's essentially, and and uh, that's essentially where my concern is. Uh, I do like. Uh, cause in watching last week's episode, I really liked the actor that got to play Will, but there was a sense of me like, why didn't you get Yaya Abdul-Mateen to play him? Play this guy. Yeah. yeah play, play Will. Like Slightly why? Older Will. He's, yeah. Why is he, <laughs> you're just having him be the husband? Turns out, no, there is a reason you had that actor playing the uh-huh. husband. You know what I mean? And, and I do hope it looks like in the teaser for next week's episode, it's the same actor that's been playing the game warden and, and all the clones that have been taken care of. I mean, what we Ozymandias, know... Ozymandias, but I'm kind of hoping that in the present, after he's been reawoken, that Yaya gets to play Dr. By, Manhattan. By the way, when we were waiting for the Get Back to the Present, one thing we didn't mention is that PD does go to Looking Glass's apartment yes. and the, all the cavalry member, members are dead and he's on the run. I hope we see what happened. Yeah, I want to see that action scene because it looks like next week we're going to get an insane action scene. Yeah, very excited yeah. for it. So, And that's going to be awesome. Yeah. And uh, But so with that, looking back, Looking left, looking back. Also, um, I think the other concern is because Angela knew the whole time, and it's like, 
How, pff, she knew that she was married to a god the whole time? Possibly. Um, and that could be why they didn't have kids. And also, it could be... There's also a weird connection now that she and Lori have. That's yeah. like, that could mean something. That he, Lori kind of talks to Cal, and Cal has to lie to... And she's like, I don't like lying to Lori. Maybe yeah. there's a connection there. But also, when Will says... To Laura, to to Angela, excuse me, when they when in the second episode, they're like, "I'm Doctor Manhattan." It's like, "No, you're not," and it's like, "There's because she knows yeah. at that point." I can't give you an answer because we don't know the answer because yeah. they're going to tell us the story. I like it so far, but yes, I do agree that the fact that she knows yeah. is 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 difficult, and it's also she's the granddaughter of the first superhero, and she's married to Doctor Manhattan. Love it's like, that. Whoa! But possibly you throw this out here. Yeah. Why she doesn't remember is that she chose not to or maybe he allowed her to forget that and maybe all the memory junk cleared it all up yeah cleared out the gunk out so that she could remember i mean you know what that that does track it, because it, it's because that's the whole point is that she has to get that uh, re- uh refresh from the elephant yeah uh <laughs> at this point the elephant's competing for panda is my like my, my favorite aspect of the show my joke when we were watching was like what if that was still will like yeah, he yeah, just yeah. turned in he's like i have got to be bored i can't I'm be an no old god now <laughs> and he turns it to no one's turning into a red dr manhattan well okay so this gets into uh, we're literally hours from the to the launch of the millennium clock i did really like true true speech i like true a lot mm-hmm. i like I, I every episode i'm like true's just so funny to me. Like I just like that she just does not give a shit about also, anybody else's thing. I like that she hasn't told Angela to this point because she's like, I've told you the same thing nine times now. Yeah, and yeah. like even before that, it's like, what is there to tell? Well, yeah. we need you to get to a point where you understand what your grandfather's going through. And yeah. you did it the wrong way, yeah, but yeah. you got there. You're so now it. which I like for evil Dr. Evil-esque ways of revealing plans. I did like that there's a logical reason why she waited this long. So First time we see True, she's buying that farm, which is the spot that she built the Millennium Clock, which something crashed from space. We had a very conspicuous moment of a very sweet because I, I rewatched um, last week's episode. Mm-hmm. It's great, and the scene where uh, Will is being told about Superman made me very emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, and the very conspicuous moment of being told about Superman crashing on a there's a crashing on the farm. I'm thinking that. Uh, uh, Keen is not the only one trying to create another Dr. Manhattan and that perhaps because we didn't introduce the cloning for no reason Mm -hmm. so I'm thinking that maybe a clone of Will graced with the abilities and this could be you said they didn't have kids this could be the closest equivalent of the Jonathan Kent in situation where it's Angela Abar and Dr. Manhattan's quote unquote kid, but it's a clone of Will with Dr. Manhattan superhuman abilities Mm -hmm. and I, it makes me wonder, like, could this show... An- so they introduce a good superhuman versus maybe evil keen Dr. Manhattan. Could we get a full-on superhuman battle at but, the end of the show? But you do know that's not what Watchmen's about. It's, it's not, about- not, but Do- Watchmen's also not about uh, Dr. Manhattan uh, erasing his memory and settling down and having a happy life. <laughs> True. I, I, I don't dislike that theory. Uh, I, I just... I feel like all of that is very purposeful. What do you think crashed on the farm based on what we know now? It's the elephant. <laughs> um, honestly, like it could be, you know what it could be? It could be the statue of Ozymandias. It, That's like, a good point. As a punishment that his like servant slash whatever they are on this planet, because uh, the message he wrote was save me and then there's a D. Yeah. So it could be Dr. Manhattan. That's a lot of words. To yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I mean, he did show, chuck a lot about it. Yeah. About he's out there. And he was out there for a while. Um, Save me D. Who else could it be? Yeah. Uh, uh, Dreyberg. Uh, sorry, I'm not oh, saying the yeah. name. Oh, uh, yeah. Dreyberg. Yeah, Dan Dreyberg. Night Owls. Yeah. Not Owl Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Night Owls. Not, name. But not also, Mirror Guy. But not also, Owl how Man. could he get there? Dr. Yeah, Manhattan's yeah. the only one who could get there to get to him. And True's been talking about... I'm get, Basically, sorry. I'm yeah. getting a, a little off track here. What I think is, is that... It's hard Lady, not to at this point. I think Lady True's the one who built this habitat yeah uh, and that's how she ended up buying the company and also it was like basically the trade-off is that you get mm-hmm. to go on another planet and live in this utopia and yeah. da, da, da. you think you made a utopia on earth here's a utopia for you and yeah. you for your ego and you get to live here and basically it was a ticking clock of mm-hmm. of uh eventually he's going to be tried in some way uh, for what he's done yeah and the punishment being that he's immortalized the way he wanted to be mm-hmm. uh, is like a gold statue and that's maybe what crash landed on earth that could be it maybe though, i do think that maybe we're at the point where dr man Manhattan created this is his version of life which I think might be an explanation of why he comes back like he creates the people that are caretaking for 
Osmanian he's, he's like oh clearly I'm I'm missing pieces mm-hmm. it's like uh, um, in uh, The Good Place what is uh, the not Janet uh, but, oh Derek Derek it's Derek. like yeah, just my, yeah my brain doesn't work yeah. and so he's trying to figure something like he's clearly missing components that are what make life mm-hmm. um, which I think works and could be really compelling um, yeah I, I think the, the big mysteries are you know for me it's like what what crashed the war earth and how does the cloning pertain to what is going on and also the question is that John Osterman let's just being candid yeah was white and yeah. now he's pretending to be a black man. Yeah. I don't know how to feel about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah. D- don't feel good, but also the writer, the writing staff is diverse and, and it's inclusive mm-hmm. and, and there are yeah. a lot of voices. Maybe we're not supposed to feel good about it. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but it yeah. does feel, I, yeah, it does. Cause yeah, he again, was white audacious. and then he was blue and now he's black. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It feels weird, but I have to voice that it does feel weird. Maybe I'm supposed to feel that way. That being maybe said, Cal was a, was a person. And has a connection like that. that like like maybe like because maybe once maybe you that's know, literally maybe, get out though. Maybe, <laughs> although although you, going back to to um, uh, Alan Moore stuff, maybe it's more of a sw- swamp thing situation that John Osterman is not Doctor Manhattan. Doctor Manhattan is a thing that now thought he was John Osterman. Oh, and cool, so cool, maybe cool. like he can become Cal or he can become whatever, and it's like which I think that would be very smart of them is is don't just pull from this, this one thing, but look at. It's something Fargo did. the The Fargo TV show. Mm-hmm. It it was a continuation of the Fargo movie, but they looked at all of the Coen Brothers movies to pull references from. Okay, cool. Yeah, to like as far as like stuff that they homaged and the the way of storytelling. So maybe it's like, well, Alan Moore also wrote Swamp Thing. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, and to know. be clear, I I'm, have zero problem with Yaya playing Doctor Manhattan yeah. or playing John. I don't. That's, that's not the pro. That's not even a problem yeah. I have. I just I think a I'm white not, guy saying like I guess I'm going to be black now. Yeah, that's the part I don't <laughs> yeah. like, and or I feel uncomfortable. About about yeah. because I want to see how they're going to tell the story because I don't see Lindelof and his team being like, yep, that's just what it is. <laughs> and yeah. It's like, no, I think there's more to it mm-hmm. because if it was Cal too, like a like a person person, yeah. that means Angela just like, and then that John went into or became or whatever, yeah. that means now he is actually dead and John's there. But or, or, I would imagine that if that's the case, he, Cal died and Dr. Manhattan's like, I'm this dude now. <laughs> That feels a lot like Get Out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, exactly. I, again, I don't know like either. The, the next episode, it's like you got some tricky stuff. I will also say superficial stuff. We hear Dr. Manhattan talk a little bit in the trailer, and it was the one time where I was like, oh, maybe the movie did that better. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't sound, he just sounds like a dude. Mm-hmm. But also, <laughs> if he can turn into a human, he can sound. Oh, and also, wants. the way that scene is, not to jump ahead, and obviously sometimes people like to, usually I like to skip the but, episode ahead. True, but we are doing a spoiler discussion. Yeah, so. so the he in that moment, the implication is he's trying to, because he's wearing the mask, he's trying to pass himself off as one of these people as a person. Mm-hmm. So maybe if you had alien voice that's like echoey, it's like, well, time out. Wow, are you doing that? Also, there's maybe a theory. Throw this out there. Yeah. Angela's seen him as that the entire time, and that that visage, like that mm-hmm. this visage that he has, no. is what everybody else sees, and that's why we are the audience watching him look like Hal. But yeah. maybe she sees him as Doctor Manhattan the whole time. Maybe that's happening. Yeah, he can yeah, apparently I, do. His powers are just kind of whatever they need to be uh, <laughs> in a moment. But I like the idea that possibly he went out to try to create life. Maybe he created this habitat. Maybe he didn't. Yeah. That we'll get to that. Tr- Lady True's shown that she can do a lot of stuff, yeah. but that he comes back literally to the place where he caused maybe the biggest atrocity that he is directly responsible for. Yeah. Not like New York. He chose not to do anything about, yeah. it. or that he couldn't do anything about, or, and chose yeah. not to. You know, whatever. Reed Rockman. Yeah. Uh, but he comes back to Vietnam to kind of have to look at the aftermath of what happened and dealing with that in some way. Because he is an emotional creature and he is taught through Laurie in the book that life it has a meaning. Yeah. And it is not just a blank mathematical calculation of random probability that just ends eventually. No, no it's like there's, there's a reason for people being there and it isn't just... The, uh, an occurrence that is intentional and he doesn't know why. So uh, last question I have for you. Who do you, do you, you, do you think Osmandius is True's dad? Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw it out there that I think we did have a question from Danny M saying possibly uh, the comedian. And you mentioned that earlier too, because he was doing lots yeah. of stuff in Vietnam with Dr. Manhattan too. Yeah. I, and maybe Dr. Manhattan's involved. Like maybe he 
created her. I don't know. I, I don't think it'll be the comedian because that feels like kind of against the ethos this show has been. And Damon Lindelof has like, I think we're still referring to uh, uh, Vite as like the country gentleman or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was very specific as like the three I allowed myself were Lori, uh, Ozymandias, and Dr. Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Any more than that, it feels more like a sequel. And, and, and uh, I, he liked to call it a remix, which now watching the show, it's like, yeah, that's fair. That's a fair way to, I mean, it is a sequel. Mm-hmm. Let's not miss words. It's a sequel. Yeah. But a remix is also a fair description of it, I think. I think so too. Uh, I'm going to go with Ozymandias because it just, it, 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 you, with how Lady True came up she just and goes also, up to a hammer that's at you, dink, dink, and he like pops out, like, oh, oh I thought like skeletons were going <laughs> to yeah. pop out. A bunch of skeletons, yeah. I guess. Uh, I, you know, I might be off base with the with the statue, but I'm I'm getting vibes that he is going to be punished in some way, and it's not going to be that Ozymandias doesn't get a happy ending in this no. story. He wasn't supposed to get a good one before, yeah. Uh, and it, this all we've seen is him being slowly tortured over and over again in yeah. this like sci-fi prison that he's in, and he's not going to get saved. No, I don't know what it means for him. What I'm interested to see is Yahya Abdul Mateen the second play. Dr. Manhattan. I want to see, I'm excited to see that performance because yeah. I like when he puts on the mask. I like, I like yeah. the little touches that they have, even though the glow is cool in the comic. And I did, I think the glow actually worked in the movie too. I like yeah. that he doesn't have any, it looks more just like a painting with, by the way, the corridor crew over on YouTube, you guys watch our stuff. You probably watch them. They're crazy yeah. popular. They talk about genie and Aladdin when they, the live action remake with Will Smith, yeah. a way to make, uh, CG characters sometimes look more realistic to have different skin colors is to make it look more like it's painted on than it is their own skin color. And mm-hmm. that's if you watch uh, Aladdin, on his stomach, you can kind of see like his skin coming mm-hmm. through the paint. Yeah. And I like that with a Dr. Manhattan as well, where yeah. it looks like his skin has been painted. I, it's, yeah. I think it's just a cool touch. Uh, over on that channel, they're way smarter about saying it, so go watch yeah. their video yeah, about check it. check that out. Um, yeah, they're but, doing Watchmen reviews. <laughs> I, but I think we're basically at the end here. Yeah, what I, would you rate this episode? <sighs> I think last episode was basically perfect. Um, so I'd give this like an eight point like seven. You know, it's yeah. like it's like a it's like a B plus. Uh, basically an A. It's just like a, the last episode was like an A plus for me, and yeah. this feels like more like an A B plus area. I would a give minus it, B plus. I was gonna say an eight, just because of of again just kind of like an overload of exposition. But then I remember the elephant and the trap door and all the like just really. The, yeah, the elephant, man. Uh, yeah, I give it an 8.5. I give it an 8.5. And, and I hope I... F- this is the first time where I was like, oh, maybe they can't stick the landing. But I feel like they can. Mm-hmm, I think so, too. And I'm excited to find out one way or the other. Because I think they're working too hard <laughs> to not to let it become like a lost or yeah. something. I think they... I would not be surprised if we get a uh, uh, Game of Thrones final episode reaction to the finale, no matter what it is. Just because, again, a lot of... I, we didn't get eight seasons of it, but a lot of build-up of theories. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm getting... I, I think they're going to be able to stick the landing. Yeah. The, people might have divisive feelings about it, yeah. but that's okay, but I think they're going to stick it overall. And I do... Just last thing I want to throw out, Danny, I'm said in the chat, maybe he said, save my daughter. Mm-hmm. And uh, Vite on the moon, that's what the D means. That will be interesting. Sit. Save me, daughter. Oh, save me, daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save me, daughter. That's, that's slow. That's yeah. a lot longer. Yeah. That also confirms one theory. Yeah. That's a good one. There, yeah. we found the theory for the video. That works. Yeah. That counts. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments down below. And we will be doing more coverage right here at youtube.com slash only stupid answers. So subscribe, like this video, check out patreon.com slash only stupid answers to watch along with us and get these reviews early. We're doing them live right now and talking to people. So we don't want you guys to miss out. Please join it. And also thank you to everyone who already supports us. You guys are the best. Happy holidays. I'm at Sam Basher on Twitter. I'm at DJ Talks trash at only stupid answers you got the bells from stupid bing bing boom we'll see you guys next time bye bye